Hello sweethearts and welcome back to my home. Today we're up in my office which is my workspace and we're going to do some hard work today. So I thought this was a good place to um, introduce this topic about getting ready to be in the game. Hence I have this um, eye black. I had to go to uh, the uh, sports store to get this but it's to make a point and of course I'm wearing my Los Angeles Dodgers t-shirt because I am an avid, avid Dodgers fan. I uh, grew up in the San Fernando Valley in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and the Dodgers came to Los Angeles in 1958 when I was four years old. So I had no chance but to be a Dodgers fan, and that has endured all these years. I'll be 67 next month, and I still love the Dodgers. But this might surprise you. I actually never played for the professional Dodgers baseball team. I know that's shocking, but I have always been a spectator. And that's where I'm going today is that it is no longer possible for us as Christ followers, as dedicated women of God to be spectators in this world. We must engage with the culture, with the challenges, and that's what I mean by getting in the game. So uh, I'm going to take these off so it's not quite so distracting, and I will be back in just a second with 17 or 18, maybe there's 18 resources in how we get in the game. Thanks, ladies. Hello again, sweethearts. Okay, first of all, I would not recommend the eye black. It's very painful to pull off and I had to touch up my makeup. So don't do that. Don't, don't wear that. Um, but I'm glad to be back here and uh, thank you so much for joining me again this week. Again, my name is Robin and you have joined Delight in Discipling. This channel is about equipping and encouraging women to be in, engaged in discipleship relationships. So thank you so much for joining me. If you're new to the channel, I am in my mid-60s. I have uh, recently retired from Christian ministry of about 25 years, and I've been discipling women uh, for about that time, for about uh, 25 years. I love discipling women. I love encouraging women to be disciples, and that's much of what we're talking about today, is how to do this in a culture that is so foreign to us older women, and how do we get engaged? How do we uh, stay relevant? How do we stay informed when discipling younger women? So, I want to start by sharing with you an article that I read. Uh, it actually is a transcript of a video by Paul Tripp. The title of the video and the transcript that I'm going to be reading from is How Do I Live as a Christian in a Non-Christian World? He uh, recorded this on July 19th of 2019, so a little less than two years ago, but it still is very, very current information. So I'm going to read you some notes that he wrote, and it's so in keeping with the purpose of this video. He wrote, How do I live as a Christian in this world gone crazy? Quote, it's very important to understand the church is not a center culture community anymore. We're a fringe culture community. We're on the edges of the culture now. We haven't moved our position. The culture has massively moved, which has depositioned us to a different place. And when you're a fringe culture community, you are generally misunderstood. People don't get you. They don't get what you're about. They don't carry your assumptions and what you stand for and the way you stand for it is generally misunderstood. So that's the culture that we live in. And you, you ladies already know this. Women think that we're just way out there or the culture does or the media does. Um, our children do. Um, anyone that is um, opposed to Christianity certainly thinks that we're way out there. Paul Tripp goes on to talk about our job description in the context of this culture. And he references the Sermon on the Mount, which is Matthew 5 through 7. I'm going to read to you Matthew 5, 14 through 16. You are the light of the world. A city located on a hill cannot be hidden. People do not light a lamp and put it under a basket, 
but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before people, so that they can see your good deeds and give honor to your Father in heaven. Paul Tripp gives a little bit of... Um, uh, Paul Tripp then gives some teaching on this passage. He, he says that this is actually a call about the manner of your life. And listen to this carefully. This is what he writes about that passage and about the Sermon on the Mount. It's to live in such a way that your life is attractive, that your life speaks the content of the gospel, that you're known, but not because you're against gay marriage and have a different view of gender. What you're most powerfully known for is that you are a gracious, loving, kind, humble person, that your life attracts people. Wouldn't it be great if you are a person that would be hard to get mad at because you've been so kind and so patient and so loving and so willing to serve and so gracious in even the ways that you talk about the hardest of issues? We should be the most attractive community on earth. People should say, I hate what those people believe, but I love those people. I wish I could hang out with people like those people. That is our job description. So those are the rules of engagement. Just like a baseball game has rules and you have uh, opposing teams, there still are rules that keep peace. And that is our rule book, is how Jesus described our manner of living in the Sermon on the Mount. So that's the posture that we need to take coming into these conversations in, in this uh, future territory that we're covering, is to have this posture of being loving people, kind, gracious, servants, servants to all, and not back away from our beliefs or our convictions, but to communicate them in such a way that they can be heard and we can be heard. So, the next thing Paul Tripp says is to stay informed. And that's really the bulk of this video is how on earth do we stay informed in the culture like this. He says that to know the movement of your culture, understand those changes, and then push your cultural competency through the Word of God. And I would encourage you, get up on the internet and find some good Christian thinkers that are regular, regularly interacting with culture. And that's what I'm going to share with you today, ironically. He goes on to say, read good books, listen to good thinking leaders, and then study the Word of God. Be grounded so that although at times you feel like an alien, you're not confused. You know who you are. You know what culture is about. You know how to understand your culture biblically and to be prepared for those moments when the attractiveness of your life has given you an opportunity to speak into the life of somebody and to give an explanation and defense of why you stand for what you stand for. So here we go, ladies. I have the top 18 resources that have kept me informed, that I'm excited about sharing, that I know are reliable, trustworthy sources have been recommended to me or I've viewed for myself and I, and I continually refer to them. So a few tips about this particular video. It's a, a little bit lengthy. The first thing is like it. When you, uh, down at the, below the screen, there are two thumbs up, or two thumbs, one up and one down. Hit the thumbs up. Not because you like me or you like the video particularly, but because this information will be something you'll want to remember or to at least remember how to get access to. So uh, give it the likes button or hit the likes button. It'll appear in your liked videos and it'll be a lot easier to relocate. So that's the first tip is like the video. The second thing is just listen. I, I, I'm sure you get tired of just looking at me in my, you know, silly outfit or whatever. So just listen to the video. I promise you, in the description box down below, you can expand that box, and I will give you all the books I speak about, the websites, the blog posts, 
and all the links. I, I work very, very hard at providing that information for you. So just turn this on, turn it on your device as you're doing the dishes or, you know, doing whatever chores and just listen because there's, there's no visuals really. I have just a few to show you. And the third thing is the description, is be sure and go uh, to that. If um, I'm not able, there's a limit in the description box of 5,000 characters. So if I exceed that, I um, will copy my notes, I will put them in an attachment to an email to you if you want to see my complete notes. So the notes that I'm working off of. So send me an email at delightindiscipling.com and I will send you back my um, notes that I prepared for this. So here we go, ladies. Here we go. The first um, resource that I'm going to give you. Let me get my papers out of the way here. Okay. So I broke these down, these resources, into six categories. And so I'm going to give you um, information, resources, um, people to look up, people to read in these six basic um, categories. The first one is theology. The second one is culture. The third one is apologetics. The fourth is church culture, which is a little different than the general culture. Um, the fifth one is children. I have a couple of resources for specifically for um, you gals who are moms and want to know what's out there for your children. And the fifth one is sexuality because there is so much confusion these days. And just recently, just within the last two years, a lot of good information has been published about um, our sexuality and in, in the midst of a very confused culture. So my first reference, here we go. The first reference is theology. And I'm going to refer to Paul Tripp. I used him at the front end of this video about his um, video that he did on uh, how do we survive as Christians. I have mentioned this book before to you, New Morning Mercies. It is a daily devotional and I have read this for years and years. And if you read this book through one page at a time, each devotion is just one page. And if you read this through in one year's time, your theology be, will be vastly improved. I can promise you that. Paul Tripp has many, many resources. I will include his uh, website, which is paultripp.com. He has um, a podcast. He has Bible studies. He has a weekly devotional. He has the daily devotional. He has sermons that are available online on YouTube. And he has many, many books, and I won't go into uh, length about his books and the ones I've read. We'll just run out of time. I could go on and on about Paul Tripp. Um, his statement of um, mission statement is a driving passion to connect the transforming power of Jesus Christ to everyday life. And he has been the most influential writer and speaker for me over the last 20 years of my life. So first one is Paul Tripp. Second, under the category of theology, is Krista Bontrager. I have also spoken about her before. She has a YouTube channel called Theology Mom, and it's Theology, Apologetics, Culture, and by Krista Bontrager. I will include that. It's, it's YouTube, so you can just Google, I mean, excuse me, you can just search for Theology Mom. She is a Bible scholar, a lay minister, author, teacher, former university professor, and a, and a homeschool mom. I would put her in her late 50s. Um, very, very bright uh, woman. And she has two masters from Talbot, both in one in Bible exposition and one in theology. She also does, in addition to Theology Mom, she also has a second YouTube channel called All the Things. It uh, broadcasts weekly live on Saturdays at 6 o'clock Pacific time. And she does that with her co-host, Monique Dusson. And all the things, that YouTube is very, very topical, relevant, very current that she posts. Uh, they uh, do a um, live uh, YouTube every Saturday. So that's another great source. So those are the two that I have for you for theology. The next one is culture, and I have quite a few under this category. The first one is Albert Moeller. You may remember when I interviewed my daughter-in-law, Heather, and she talked about Albert Moeller. 
and once I started listening to him, I got absolutely hooked. He broadcasts a podcast daily, Monday through Friday. It's their generally 20 to 30 minute podcast. And um, he is, his mission, he says, is to address contemporary issues from a consistent and explicit Christian worldview. The man is brilliant. <laughs> he is the president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary, and he has been called the reigning intellectual of the evangelical movement in the U.S. He is a wealth of knowledge in politics, cultural um, uh, movements, cultural life, um, reasonable, articulate. Uh, you, you'll just get so much information. I cannot stress enough that he, he certainly has a bias, but his bias is towards the Christian faith and a Christian worldview. I just started listening to him at the first of this year, and I am so thankful for his ministry. He also has a book called We Cannot Be Silent, Speaking Truth to a Culture, Redefining Sex, Marriage, and the Very Meaning of Right and Wrong. I have not read that book, but believe me, it's on my list. Okay, the second resource for culture is Allie Beth Stuckey, and she has a podcast called Relatable. Again, that was recommended to us by both my daughter-in-law and by Sandy Schmidt. In a, or one of, actually, Sandy, I think my very first interview. A great gal. Okay, she just turned 30 uh, last week. Young woman, bright, articulate, lively, engaging. You, um, If you're just a young woman and, and she's in your peer group, I can't imagine that you're not going to love her. Her pod podcast, she says, is to analyze culture, news, and politics from a biblical perspective. She also has a blog, AllieBethStuckey.com. Again, all of this will be in the notes. Third resource I recommend for you is Christianity Today. Again, it, this magazine, this publication was founded in 1956 by Billy Graham. It was called the Evangelicism Flagship Magazine. Now, they are more liberal now than they certainly were in 1956, but they still do an excellent job of reporting cultural events and current events in, in America and actually worldwide. It's a good publication. The subscription is $39, or you can get a digital uh, subscription, which I actually I do both. Um, they also have free newsletters that come out. Some are weekly, some are daily, uh, some are monthly. Uh, so just Google Christianity Today and you will get a wealth of information that's available to you. A lot of it for free. The next reference I have for you is World Magazine. World Magazine, and I quote, is a news organization producing biblically sound daily coverage of global, natural, and cultural current events. It is a published magazine. I believe it's weekly or bi-weekly. My mom used to share hers with me, but since she moved to Arkansas, I don't have access to them. Um, but I have read them. They also have a podcast called The World and Everything in It, delivering essential headlines, field reporting, interviews, and expert analysis every weekday. Um, it provides sound journalism grounded in God's Word. Um, I read uh, I read World Magazine online, and another great, just I don't know how to describe it better. It's a great um, resource to understand world events through a Christian lens. The fifth one might surprise you. It's actually uh, Dennis Prager, and uh, Dennis Prager is a radio personality here in Los Angeles area. And although I think his broadcast is nationwide now, but I listened to him beginning in the, probably the late 70s, early 80s. He used to have a radio program called Religion on the Line. But he's been on a daily broadcast weekdays for decades. I, um, I don't listen to his daily broadcasts anymore. But what I do like is, and what I'm recommending, is something he calls Prager U. Prager University, Prager U. Um, Dennis is an Orthodox Jew, so he's not going to have a Christian worldview, but he is going to have a Judeo-Christian worldview. 
and he publishes or he produces these small, short, five-minute videos, five, six minutes of cultural um, news under the heading of Prager U. I think you can get it as a podcast also, I'm pretty sure, uh, but certainly it is a video presentation. And um, I'll quote their, their own description. It's five-minute videos on various topics from a conservative perspective. He does have a podcast, but I don't listen to his podcasts. I don't think they're particularly well done. They actually are just edited versions of his radio program. And so I, I, don't, I don't enjoy listening to them. But Prager U is a, is a plus, is a great. Okay, uh, number six is Worldviews and Cultural Fluency. This is a YouTube channel with a lot of different presenters. Um, this is rather new to me. It's pretty academic. Um, and for some of you, that's right up your alley. And I do listen to it. Probably one of my favorite contributors is John Stone Street. He is the president of the Colson Center. And the one I just listened to this morning was the Four Major Cultural Shifts. It's about a 40-minute video. But um, I like this. I like, I, I think it's a good YouTube channel. I think you'll learn a lot. And again, it's pretty academic. It's not really conversational. Um, it's just uh, monologues, one-on-one -on -one presentations that of, of the ones that I've seen. But it's still really good. Um, the uh, book that I'm recommending is called Hidden Worldviews by Steve Wilkins and Mark Sanford. This was recommended to me by one of my pastors, and I have not read it. I just got it within the last week, and I haven't read it, but he read it for a seminary class and highly recommended it. So again, it's called Hidden Worldviews. So next up is apologetics. So the first thing that I'm really excited about is an organization called Women in Apologetics. I have attended three of their annual conferences. They're held at Biola University in La Mirada, and I've attended three. The first, the one this year um, was a virtual conference. And the good news is, is that they recorded much of it. And you can go on their website. And um, I will put that in the notes. And you can um, actually download the videos. I think the cost is about $35 to see the videos. And if you and a couple of friends want to invest, you know, $10 each and get together, it was a great conference. These ladies are top-notch, educated women who, who drive home the importance of knowing Scripture, being able to defend our faith, and uh, speak to our culture. It's a great conference and uh, a great organization. They have, um, they have a lot of free resources, blogs, a lot of contributors, and it's just great. It's, it's, it's terrific. From that, from Women in Apologetics, I was introduced to a woman named Alyssa Childers. When I say introduced, I don't mean I met her, but uh, I was introduced to her materials. Um, she was formerly a Christian recording artist, a songwriter, and then she went through a period of profound doubt in her mid-30s. And in that season, she began studying the Word of God and, and answering in her own heart and mind um, the really hard questions of the Christian faith and what she was going to believe. Um, her podcast is fabulous. Um, it's just called Alyssa Childers. And um, she's been on YouTube since 2007, so a lot of listings there. It, her podcast is described as apologetics, theology, culture, and worship. She is, these are my words, articulate, bright, handles tough topics really well. She does interviews, and she's a regular contributor um, for Women in Apologetics. The next um, apologist I'd love to share with you is Sean McDowell. Sean McDowell is the son of Josh McDowell. Uh, many of you, if you've been a Christian a long time, know who that is. This is the first book that I read of his, which is So the Next Generation Will Know. He published this in 2019 with uh, J. Warner Wallace. Outstanding book. I read this book in like two days. Great book. Compassionate, but insistent that we must pass on our faith to the next generation. Sean is an associate professor in the Christian Apologetics Program at Talbot School of Theology at Biola University. 
He is listed among the top 100 apologists in the U.S. <clears throat> um, he earned his Ph.D. in apologetics and worldview studies from the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in 2014. I told you about his that book. He's he's written another new book, which uh, overlaps a little bit when I get to the sexuality um, section. But he has a, his most recent book is Chasing Love. Sex, Love, and Relationships in a Confused Culture. He has a YouTube channel called Dr. Sean McDowell. He has a blog and a podcast called Think Biblically, Conversations on Faith and Culture. Tremendous asset to us and uh, just a great resource for us to learn more about apologetics and our culture, so his overlaps. Okay, so our next category was church culture. So two, just two sources for church culture. The first one is Barna, Barna.com. They're um, uh, similar to like a Gallup organization. They poll and survey Christians and non-Christians nationwide. They're located here in Southern California in Ventura, not too far from me. Um, this is off their website. Barna Group provides spiritual influencers, which is who we are, with credible knowledge and clear thinking enabling them to navigate a complex and changing culture. It's, uh, they carefully and strategically track the role of faith in America, developing one of the nation's most comprehensive databases of spiritual indicators. They have multiple blogs off their site written by multiple people. There's a weekly podcast with David Kenneman. He is the CEO of um, Barna, and that is called Church Pulse Weekly, and it's a fabulous um, podcast I listen to regularly to understand the church's response to cultural shifts. And most recently in the last year, the church's response to COVID and all the challenges that we faced about meeting and not meeting and everything from everything having to do with COVID and what the future looks like. It's a terrific podcast if your interest is in understanding what the churches in America are moving towards and how they're um, not adapting biblically, but adapting um, conversationally to engage the next conversation. Um, the second one under church culture is Carrie Newhoff terrific guy. He is a Canadian. I have spoken about him before. He's a former pastor, an attorney, and an author. He has a blog, a podcast, and a YouTube. And I get daily emails. I look forward to his daily emails. And I don't know how many of you have are flooded with daily emails that you just delete, 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 delete. I never delete carries. I always want to know what's on its mind what he's writing about, what he's speaking about, and who his next interview is going to be. It's called the Carrie Newhoff Leadership Podcast, and he even provides transcripts, which for me as a reader is really, really helpful. Um, he has a leadership co uh, course called The High Impact Leader, and he has a book, Parenting Beyond Your Capacity, among that's his latest book, um, and I just ordered it. I just got it. And actually, now that I say that, I think he actually has a book after that one also. Carrie is a great thinker. He's a great communicator. He's very gracious. He's relentless in his pursuit about knowing more. He's very curious, very engaging interview style. In fact, I've learned so much from him as an interviewer. And I cannot uh, stress highly enough um, to understand church culture is to listen to Carrie Newhoff. Okay, next category is children. So I have two resources for you for children. The first one is Elizabeth Urbanowitz. I have to be careful saying her name. She is the um, author of the Foundation Comparative Worldview Curriculum. So it's not a book, it's a whole curriculum for students and what she would call kids. So like eight to 13, so elementary school kids. And um, I've listened, I will link in my notes an interview that she did with Joel uh, Settercase. And then she also was did a two presentations on that uh, YouTube I spoke about worldviews and cultural fluency. 
She um, has a BS uh, in elementary education. She was a school teacher first for about 10 years. And then she got a master's in Christian apologetics from Biola and incredibly bright. She, in fact, she spoke many times, she spoke way over my head, but that's who I would want to write a curriculum if I still had school age children. I really would want a really bright woman to do this. Um, I, I, I listened to both um, the interview and her one of her two presentations on the um, uh, worldviews and cultural fluency. And um, this is, and, and they're, they're just terrific. It, she's, I, I just can't imagine that you would not want to know more about her curriculum. And you can buy her curriculum just as an individual family. You can buy it for a small group. You can buy it for a homeschool group and you can buy it for a school campus. The description of her curriculum is this. Foundation Worldview is a comparative worldview curriculum that instills robust Christian apologetics for kids. Several years into her teaching experience, Foundation Worldview, Elizabeth Urbanowitz, realized that despite being raised in Christian homes, attending a Christian school, and being active in church, her students thought more like the culture than Christ. And that was what drove her to write this curriculum. The second resource is Hilary Morgan Fair. She wrote a book called Mama Bear Apologetics, and I gave it as a gift to my daughter-in-law, Heather. She loves this book. She's read it with a group of women, and um, Hillary uh, recently came out with a study uh, form of the book so that you can do it in small group settings. So it's a book and a guide, and um, it's Mama Bear Apologetics, Empowering Your Kids to Challenge Cultural Lies. She also has a blog, she has a podcast with Amy Davidson, and she also has a YouTube channel. Um, she has a master's in biology with specialties or cultural apologetics, dealing with doubt and identifying causes and solutions for youth leaving the church. Really, really smart gal. I actually heard her, the first time I heard her, I heard her at the Women in Apologetics Conference. She's, a very articulate, very bright young woman, and um, just a sweetheart, just a sweetheart. Uh, the third one, and I uh, I realized I just added this in, so I do have a third one, is is a it's kind of an old favorite, is Focus on the Family. And their mission is to cooperate with the Holy Spirit in sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with as many people as possible by nurturing and defending the God-ordained institution of the family and promoting biblical truths worldwide. You're not going to go wrong just going to focus on the family. And they have uh, a daily broadcast Monday through Friday and just countless interviews. And they've been around for decades and decades. The last subject is sexuality. I have just one resource. Um, I think he is the um, premier thinker about sexuality in this culture with a Christian view. He is Dr. Preston M. Sp uh, Sprinkle. He's the president of the Center for Faith, Sexuality, and Gender, and is a New York Times bestseller list. Um, his latest book is called Embodied Transgender Identities, the Church, and What the Bible Has to Say. He has his PhD um, in New Testament. Um, more than reading his books, I do two things with Preston Spr Sprinkle. I listen to his podcast, uh, Theology in the Raw is the name of his podcast, and his YouTube is just Preston Sprinkle. Both are outstanding resources, and some of them overlap. Some of the interviews he does on Preston Sprinkle YouTube are also part of his podcast. But you're not going to love everything he says, and it's going to be confusing to you, and it may stir up angst in your heart. I just want to tell you that up front. But he is open to conversation. He tries to hear people out. He wants to know what they're thinking, why they're thinking it. And then he comes into that situation or in that thought with a biblical worldview. Dynamic Christian. So I first met Preston as a professor at Eternity Bible College here in Ventura County. And I met him and we became acquainted and he has a terrific mind and he has a sincere and driving passion 
to not only bring people to Christ, but to influence those who have left the faith and bring them back into the fold. Beautiful man, very, very dynamic speaker. Um, and I, again, it's just um, someone I strongly recommend, especially if you have a teenager in your home, someone who is struggling with their sexuality, gender identification, he would be a tremendous resource. He even developed curriculum for small groups in uh, Bible um, settings, um, you know, small groups in uh, youth groups in a, in a church setting. And he also has a book for teens called Living in a Gray World, A Christian Teen's Guide to Understanding Homosexuality. So a great, great resource. Okay, we're at the end of my resources. Ladies, thank you so much for hanging in with me. I had just a few more things to share. At the conclusion of that video that I referenced at the very beginning with Paul Tripp, he says this towards the uh, ending of his presentation, and I'm just going to quote him verbatim. He says, quote, you don't have to be afraid, but you need to be informed and you need to know your place and you need to know how important it is for you to break down those misconceptions. And I'm going to add the misconceptions that people have about us as believers, not just by speaking the gospel, but by living a beautiful gospel life with all of its love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control. Who wouldn't want to live next door to a person like that? Be the neighbor that everyone in your building or everyone on your block talks about, not because you're against everything, but because the kind of person that you are. This week's passage of scripture that I'm sharing with you is out of Philippians. Paul's writing this letter to fellow sufferers that have suffered in the faith for the cause of Jesus Christ. He's calling them to band together in unity, which is part of what I always call us to do, is to do this fight and this, this effort, do this together. And he urges them to never give up. This is out of the Passion Translation, Philippians 1, 27 through 30. Whatever happens, keep living your lives based on the reality of the gospel of Christ, which reveals him to others. Then, when I come to see you or hear good reports of you, I'll know that you stand united in one spirit and one passion, celebrating together as conquerors in the faith of the gospel. And then you will never be shaken or intimidated by the opposition that rises up against us. For your courage will only prove as a sure sign from God of their coming destruction and that you have found a new life. For God has graciously given you the privilege not only to believe in Christ, but also to suffer for him. For you have been called by him to endure the conflict in the same way that I have endured it. For you know I'm not giving up. Ladies, that's what I wish for all of us. We cannot give up. We need to be determined to bring as many people into faith and confidence in salvation in Christ Jesus as we possibly can in our lifetimes. Thank you so much for hanging in with me. I know this is a long video. Thank you so much for being here. Please share it with your friends. Again, like it so that you have this information so you can get these resources and find them easily. Uh, commit this week to, to look at one resource, listen to one po podcast, watch one YouTube video, get engaged in the culture that we are engaged in and where we live. Ladies, it is not going back. As much as I love the 70s and the heydays of the 80s in the faith, we are not going back there. We are becoming a minority culture and a minority community. And we have to operate in the truth of that and the knowledge of that. Please subscribe to the channel. I come uh, every Wednesday. I do my very best to get a um, new video out for you. And I love doing that. Um, I have some surprises coming up in the next couple of weeks that I hope to share with you. God bless you, ladies. I love you. Thank you for your comments. Thank you for subscribing. I'm so encouraged that this is just a budding little channel 
that's uh, getting some steam and some uh, movement and, and I hope, with all my heart, I hope is influencing you to disciple and disciple well. God bless you. Have a delightful week and I love you. God bless.